Hello and welcome to my gardening notebook. I'm Paul, the geriatric gardener. Now my stepdaughter Sally doesn't think I should use the term geriatric. Well to tell you the truth I'm more geriatric than I am a gardener so I think I'll stick with it. Anyway you remember if you've seen previous episodes that I'm trying to turn this into this. So far we've got the hard landscaping done now it's time to think about planting. And whilst I'm at it, chances are I'll be giving you a few hints and tips. Talk about tips. A friend of mine gave me a tip the other day about a horse running in a race at Utoxeter, I think it was. <coughs> he said it was a very good outside chance at 20 to 1. So I put my money on, it started at 20 to 1. Unfortunately, the rest of the field started at half past 12. <laughs> Right, so we've laid out the garden. Now I've got to put something in it. First of all, I need some structure, some vertical structure. That means trees, and trees of a type that won't give a load of shadow over the rest of the garden. I chose four to dominate the herbaceous side of the upper garden. On the left, as you look, a cherry, a prunus autumnalis, wonderful because it puts its blossom out early in the spring or late winter before the leaves come out. So it's some winter interest there. In the middle then we've got two birches. These are or came as five foot high trees for only 35 pounds each. Absolute bargain from Springwood Nurseries in Burnley. Hopefully I'll be able to do a piece on Springwood Nurseries uh, later in the series. Finally in this section a laburnum. Another spectacular flowering tree. In the upper section, which I'm calling my mini orchard, because it's the sunniest spot in the garden, I've put an apple tree, a Cox's Orange Pippin. This came from Tesco. It was on offer at seven pounds only. Then I've got three dessert cherries. These are all dwarf trees, and I had them in pots in my old garden. Here I've planted them in the ground, and they seem to be doing very well. Whilst on the subject of fruit, I have a prime spot on the southwest facing wall of the garage. It gets beautifully hot in the sunshine, and this benefit is being wasted on the Clematis Montana. I'm going to put the Clematis somewhere else, and perhaps grow an Espalier peach, or even a vine on this hot wall. Back up in the orchard there's a witch haze, and it's really in the wrong place, so I'm going to transplant that out into the wildflower area at the back, in the winter. And then in the corner I've planted a Robinia Red Robin, famed for its scarlet new growth in spring. Finally in this part of the garden I've got two Japanese maples, Asa palmata, and these are a deep copper which contrasts well against the grasses behind them. There's one plant I haven't got yet and that's a fuchsia. Perhaps I'm a bit like Michael J. Fox, he turned his back to the fuchsias. <laughs> and down at the bottom we have a bog garden. I originally dug a hole here and put in one of those plastic freeform ponds. But when the landscape people put in my fish tank, I moved the fish and filled this plastic pond with sods of earth. I bought a couple of yellow ligularias, which love having their feet in wet earth. But unfortunately, the slugs totally demolish them. At least the irises and primulas are doing okay. It's difficult to get an established look in the herbaceous border after just one season, and I've got a few perennials in there, a lupin, which flowered its socks off earlier on, a geranium, which I'll be able to divide and spread about next year, a range of dianthus pinks, which flowered heartily from May to August, but which really now past it in mid-September. Finally there are some ornamental grasses and they are doing really well. Next time I'll be dealing with the wildflower meadow at the back and also I'll be buying and planting bulbs. So don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on those next episodes. In the meantime thank you very much for watching. Cheerio!